Hello, 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 everyone. This is Justin from Zon Commerce here today to talk to you about everything that is Amazon and e commerce driven, of course, with the focus on Amazon FBA selling. I wanted to talk to everyone today about what I like to call the Google keyword, uh, Google Trends. Um, tool, which is actually free. You know, anyone can go on here. I mean, Google, I, I promise you, they are a resource for so much stuff that you can utilize um, and just trying to figure out certain trends. I mean, obviously, a lot of people utilize Google Trends for a lot of things that are outside of just keywords. Um, but what I'd like to do is, you know, I have a background in digital marketing. I do a lot of search engine optimization. I run an SEO company. And a lot of things that I do is I utilize a lot of Google's tools for things that are outside of Google. And even as an FBA global seller where we sell all around the world, I felt like it was important to talk about a, this particular tool, Google Trends, because it really helps me figuring out whether a particular product or a niche within a actual market is worth exploring or not. And so, you know, the great thing with Google Trends is that it allows you to you know, after you've done some of the research, right? Let's say you've picked five to 10 products that you wanna do some research in, and you know that you're gonna focus on a particular global market. So for our purposes, we're gonna say that we're gonna focus on the United States. So we'll change this right here. We'll say we're gonna focus on the United States. And we know that um, we have five products that we wanna focus on. And we start doing the keyword research, but we're not quite certain if that keyword is on the proper trend or trage trajectory. Can't say that, say that one well. Trajectory. If that's going up, if it's going down, or you know, if this is the keyword that I should even be focusing on for this particular uh, market or for this particular product. It's really important to go through that process and Google Trends gives you really the high level focus on whether this is a product worth looking at. Um, and so I figured I'd take you through a few examples of some areas that I think you know are worth exploring. And one of them uh, is this product called Garcinia Cambogia. I believe it's sort of like a weight loss supplement or something along those lines. It was very popular on Amazon at one point um, and it died a very, very, very quick death. Um, very, very quick death. Uh, I think it's still popular, um, but I think it's really starting to go on a decline. And you can see that from here. Um, of course, there really wasn't much going on back in 2006. Maybe a few, a few rumblings, but nothing that was, you know, really uh, that was really that popular. And as you kind of go about, you can see that it really starts to take off in 2012, 2013, and there are just a ton of people that are searching for this particular item. So if you're an Amazon seller and you are white labeling, or I guess I guess it would be probably, uh, you know, it would be white labeling because I believe you have to source in the United States if you're going to sell this drug or the supplement in the United States. But if you are sourcing in the United States, um, you could see that those guys that were selling this in 2014 were making a killing. They were doing incredibly well. Um, and sometimes there are products that are on a great trend that will allow you to do that. Um, and, and that's okay. If it's going to make you a ton of money that's going to allow you to you know, transfer those funds or move that into another long-term opportunity, all power to you. It's nothing wrong with that. But in this case, uh, you can see that it goes down drastically and it's continuing to go down. Uh, so for me, uh, the Garcinia Cambogia product is something that I probably would not uh, focus on as a product um, if I were looking at a new market for two reasons. One, because this product was so competitive and I think it still is competitive of a product to sell in Amazon. Um, FBA or merchant for that matter. And secondly, it's because of the trend line. You can see that it's going downward. Um, so it probably isn't the right focus for us. So let's go ahead and scratch that. Let's think of another keyword. Let's say, um, let's uh, take a look at the selfie stick. You know, I've done examples on the selfie stick in the past. You know, it's a good product in the sense that it's with, you can fit it within sort of like if you want to create a travel brand. That's another area that you could focus on if you really wanted to. So let's say we go with selfie stick. And we do a search for selfie stick. Give it a little bit of time to do its research. And you can see that this thing really took off again in 2000 and early 2014. 
Um, there was no mention of, of course, you know, for a lot of reasons, you know, smartphones really weren't that popular back then, really started to get more and more popular. Someone came up with a genius idea because people love to take, you know, selfies and take pictures of themselves, but their arms aren't long enough uh, and they can't really get the background. Someone invented the selfie stick, they named it the selfie stick, the rest is history. And you can see here that it is incredibly, incredibly popular. Now, is this a type of product that has the potential to die a quick death? Maybe, I'm not sure. You know, the trend line for this product might go down, but, you know, I think if it's something you want to make some initial money on and, you know, enter the market and see if it's something that you can do well in for a certain period of time, please, all power to you. Um, me personally, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm sort of like 50-50 if I would actually go into this particular market. Um, I believe they sell for anywhere from 10 bucks or nine bucks all the way up to, you know, there's one really premium selfie stick that sells for like 20 bucks. Um, so it really depends on the profit margins and how competitive that market is. I do believe that market is fairly competitive. Um, but you know, it's uh, to each his own. You just have to decide if that makes sense. But you know, the point here is you can see that the trend line for this product is up. And I don't think it's gonna go down quickly anytime soon. But it gives you a sense of whether this is a market at least worth doing more research in. or if you should if you have like a product checklist and you say, you know, if it's on an upward trend, I'm going to give myself an additional four points for that particular popular keyword, then, you know, that's something worth considering. So maybe we'll go with the selfie stick. So now let's do this. Let's pick a generic a product. Let's say we decide to do, let's say wine opener. That's a good one. So let's say wine opener. That's a pretty generic one. Now, the thing that I love about um, Google Trends is that, yes, it tells you the trend line and the popularity of that keyword um, for that product, but it also can give you a sense of how much inventory you need to stock up at different times of the year. And so if you look at the, the keyword wine opener over the past, let's say, uh, 11 years you can see and this makes sense right during the October November and December time frame is when people really start to make a lot many more purchases online it just happens you know whether it's through third-party websites or through Amazon and you can really see that here it's December every single time every single time and the good thing with Google Trends is that you don't need to just only focus on no, I think it just switched over to worldwide, but we'll go back to the United States. So you can switch it out and you can say, all right, well, let's look at over the past, let's say past 12 months and see what the trend line looks like. Give it a little bit of time to fetch. You can see that once again, it gets really, really popular in December. It really takes a dip, but you can see that there's still a certain level of consistency. It's not necessarily like you know, a, a full downward trend or anything like that, which is kind of cool. Now, the other side of it is, let's say you had more than one keyword that you were researching for a particular product. So, you know that wine openers can also be known as corkscrew, um, corkscrews, or waiter corkscrews, but we'll just call it corkscrews for that matter. So, instead of getting rid of this term, let's add a new term. Let's add corkscrew to the mix. And see what that looks like looks pretty similar and what's really interesting about this is you can see that corkscrew actually gets more searches there's more of a demand for that keyword than there is even for wine opener which is in, which is really fascinating I guess probably because the the corkscrew has more more uses for it like you can use it as a bottle opener you can use it as a as a beer bottle opener more so than just a wine opener, which most people may think, oh, it's just a wine opener, when that's not always the case either. But this is what's really good about this is it gives you a sense of the trend line for those individual keywords that you will be utilizing throughout your copy, you know, through the keywords that you're going to be using for your super URLs. We are trying to rank really well in Google. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not in Google. I'm still thinking uh, SEO wise. If you're trying to rank in Amazon. Uh, for some of these keywords. And again, the beauty of Google Trends is that you don't have to just focus on the United States. Again, we sell you know, our products all around the world. So we have, we send F, um, uh, fulfillment uh, inventory to Germany, we send it to K 
Canada. We send it to Japan, a lot of different fulfillment centers. And so if you wanted to research that individual market, you can research that individual market. You can say, all right, well, let's look in Japan. Mm, Japan, it's not enough search volume, but that's probably because you know English isn't the native tongue for Japan. But let's say we decide to go with United Kingdom. <clears throat> we go with the United Kingdom, you can see here that there is a little bit more consistency in the search volume, and there's not much at all for wine opener. So, you know, going through this process and utilizing uh, Google Trends can really help you in, in just making better decisions. And that's really what this process is all about. What are all the tools that I can use at my dispense that are both paid and free that will allow me to make a better decision when I'm trying to pick my product? Is this product on a downward trend? Are these keywords the right keywords? Do I need to do a little bit more research and find some other keywords um, that I can leverage for my particular product or for my market for that matter? As you go through that process, you'll finally be able to determine whether this keyword makes sense for you or not, and it will allow you to make better decisions um, overall uh, as you're going through the product research phase um, for your for your business for that matter. So I hope this was helpful. Um, Google Trends is a very, very popular tool. It is free. You don't have to pay for it. You can easily find it by going to Google and typing in Google Trends or just go to google.com Google forward slash trends, which you can see it's right here. And um, you should be in good shape. Uh, play around with it. Um, incorporate it into your product research phase and also your, your market research phase for that matter. And, um, and, and we'll go from there. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email or reach out to me on, on Facebook or Twitter and, um, and we'll keep in touch. Thanks for, so much for listening and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.